welcome to the Tabletop Ramblings Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Solo Tournament. Today's battle pitches Theoden, King of Rohan, against the Witch King of Angmar. This is game six of six in the tournament, and this is going to be big. First place, second place, and third place could go to anyone at this point in time, given the results of this game. So this is going to be absolutely massive. Both Theoden and the Witch King are looking for top point victories here, and they will secure their position at the top of the table. There is no room for error, no half measures. Both of our champions need victory, and they will kill to get it. Theoden is at the head of his Riders of Theoden Legendary Legion. He's accompanied by two mounted royal guard with throwing spears, one mounted royal guard with no additional war gear, and one rider of Rohan. Riding to war with him today are Dernhelm, Deawine, and Aema, and they each have two mounted royal guard with throwing spear and one rider of Rohan with throwing spear. And that is 600 points of the Riders of Theoden Legendary Legion. The Witch King of Angmar has a Spectre, a Warg Rider with Shield, three Orcs with Shield, and three with Spear and Shield. Now these are the Moran and Orc models, but they are representing standard Angmar Orcs for today's battle. With the Witch King, he has a Captain on Warg with a Shield, and he is distinguishable because he's pointing like any good commander. And then with the captain, there's three orcs with shield, and three with spear and shield. There's also the shade. He has a spectre, a war rider with shield, four orcs with shield, and four with spear and shield. And finally, a barrowite. He has with him three orcs with shield, three with spear and shield, a war rider with shield, and a spectre. And that is 600 points of Angmar. For this battle, Theoden and the riders of Rohan will be using the green dice and will be the good player, and Angmar will be the red dice, and they will be the evil player. Upon the green plains of Rohan, battle will take place. This small abandoned hamlet is going to be the site of a major battle with a central well surrounded by three small buildings and scattered trees. The board is quite open but with some areas of terrain for shield walls. The conflict is fierce and both sides need to scout out the enemy position. Today's battle is recon or reconnoiter. For this scenario, both forces needing to scout out the enemy position will need to get their force off the table on their opponent's board edge. The VPs are massive for being able to get models off your opponent's board edge with three if you have at least one model off the board and it's more than your opponent. You get five if you have double the number and at least two that leave the board. And if you can triple the number of models off the board that your opponent does and you have at least three, then you get seven victory points. There are also victory points for wounding and killing the enemy leader. One for wounding, two for killing. And if you break your opponent, you get one victory point, but a massive three if you're able to break them and remain unbroken. At the end of a turn in which one force has been reduced to 25%, the game will end and the victory points will be tallied up. Deployment for recon follows the reinforcement special rule. At the end of our champion's move phase, they'll roll for each of their warbands 
and on a four plus the warband enter the board from their board edge and on a one two or three they do not enter but each turn that they fail a warband to come on they do get plus one to the dice each subsequent turn so we are ready to get straight in to turn one priority turn one goes to angmar this is how the board is looking at the end of turn one angmar managed to get the shade and the captain onto the board but the witch king rolling first on a three didn't spend any might and then the barrow white also got a three but has no might to be able to get onto the board so they are looking quite thin on the ground at the moment rohan on the other hand look a lot stronger both theoden and deawine um dernhelm rather rolled high enough to get onto the board theoden coming in on the center deawine uh, dernhelm rather on the right and then deawine rolled a three but he decided to spend a point of might to come in on the left and push an early advantage. So that's how the board is looking and we'll go into turn three. Turn two, priority. Turn two goes to Rohan. End of turn two movement and now everything is on the battlefield. Aima rolled a two to come on so he had to use might to pump that up to a three. They have a massive might advantage against Angmar, so they're going to use it right from the start. Theoden and the rest of the riders that were already on the board just moved up further. They couldn't move very far because they didn't want to be in charge range if Angmar moved full and then full again if they got priority. So they've moved up so that they'd be out of range. Angmar, however, in their move just shuffled up to try and form some blockades not wanting to get charged while there weren't too many of their forces on the board although at the end of the turn the rest did arrive with the witch king coming in on the left to face down Daywine and on the right the Barrowite bolstered the captain who is facing off against Dernhelm. A couple of the riders did move half moves to enable them to shoot so we'll come back into the shoot phase. In fact, just before we start the shoot phase, we'll finish off the Witch King's move. So he has moved half, and he's going to cast Drain Will on Deowine. He's got the Crown of Morgul to help him. He needs a five to get it to go off. It is a five, so it has gone off. Deowine only has one will, so he's gonna resist it, because he's lost it anyway. But if he gets that magic six, then he'll get it resisted for free. No. So he has lost all his will. And he is now at the mercy of Angmar's magic. The Witch King will then just finish off his move by moving back. It's also worth noting that the Witch King is the same build he's been throughout the tournament. Which is 3 might, just 12 will and 3 fate. Into the shoot phase then we have... This rider here, who is going to shoot over into the orcs, and he's just going for whoever is on the front line. He's moved, so he's hitting on fives. He does hit. He needs a six again to wound. No, just a one. So that first arrow there hits the orc in the shield and does no wounds. Finally, we have this rider here, and again, he is going to fire his bow, but he is going to go for the captain with two in the way. He's going to try and get an incredibly lucky shot, take him off his warg. He's moved, so he's hitting on fives. He does hit. Does he go past the orc in front, a four up? No, so he's hit the first orc, a five. So close, the shield there sees him through, and that orc is fine. So that is the end of the shooting. There's no combats, so we'll come back with turn three, priority. Turn three goes to Angmar. Move phase, and the Witch King is going to transfix on Deowine. Just one dice, it goes off on the two. Bare minimum, but he does get it. 
So Daywine is now transfixed. End of turn three movement. And with Angmar's priority, they advanced quite cautiously. We've seen over on the left that the Witch King cast Transfix onto the onto Daywine. And then his force just advanced with him. The Shade moved up slightly further, forming a wall between that terrain. And then the Captain and the Barrowite formed a nice big block on the right. Crucially though, the Spectre used a Fell Light is in you on Dernhelm, who as you can see is nowhere to be seen. She rolled snake eyes on her courage test and having failed it, had to move full under Angmar's control. And she fled nearly to the back of the board, right in the wrong direction. Meaning that Rohan in their move just formed up at the eight inch mark to throw spears and are unable to charge without the backup of a hero. Aimer and one Royal Guard have moved over to help. His riders at the back there just lining up for shots. And then here in the centre, Theoden and his Royal Guard have charged. Although the chill aura of the shade may cause him some trouble. And then over on the left, with Daywine transfixed, he has been forced to stay still and his cavalry have decided to do the same. They're out of charge range next turn, so they are just gonna throw their spears without moving. So with that, we'll go into the shoot phase. Over on the left, we have three throwing spears into the frontline orcs. They've moved, so they will be needing fives to hit. One hit and then needing fives to wound. Five plus a six. And the first orc falls. Coming across, this rider here is going to take a shot into the warg rider. He's got a clean shot, so he's hitting on fives. No, he has missed. This rider has a shot right down this avenue into that orc there. But he misses as well. And finally, we have three throwing spears here. Two of them are in range of the ghoul there, of the spectre. So though we're hitting him, if by some miracle they both wound, it'll be the front two there. One hit, so it's on the spectre. And a five gets the kill. The spectre goes down. Then there is another throwing spear here, but he misses. Overall though, quite a successful volley from Rohan. Start of the combat phase, and the shade has activated chill aura. That means any enemy models, so that's all of the Rohirrim that are within six inches, have negative one on their dual roll effectively making all of the models fighting around him on his side fight 10, which is quite impressive. We'll first start off with this Royal Guard against two. So it's two on two, he's charged, and there with the six, the Angmar Orcs automatically win because the six for the Royal Guard, even though he's fight five next to Theoden, is negative one down to a five. So they need sixes to wound, double ones. He's fine there, but he has lost. Next, we'll do Thaden. Thaden has three on the charge. Oh, and again, that six negative one down. Thaden is going to spend a point of might to win that fight, just to get some kills. That six there, he has crushed him. So that is one more dead orc. And then we'll do two on two. Shade there, winning both of those fights so far. And again, two apiece. 
And again, it goes to Angmar because of the negative one from the shade. Needing sixes. No. He backs away as well. Angmar winning fights, but struggling to kill in this early stage. Two on two again. Final fight of the fight phase. Oh, and this time that six goes down to a five. But now fight value has them. The rider there seeing victory. So he gets double strikes. Roll these twice, but that five gets him. The spearman there choosing not to give way, holding his position. This is how the board is looking at the end of turn three. The central clash has cross stayed in a point of might, but he's managed to start getting some early game kills. And this turn also saw the volley of throwing spears starting to hit its mark. The battle is just beginning and already the blood is flowing. Let's go into turn four priority. Turn four goes to Angmar with Angmar priority. Theoden is going to call a heroic move. The Shade has no might and the Captain there with might and the Witch King are both out of range of doing anything. So Theoden will get to move unhindered. That heroic move from Theoden sees him passing his courage test to charge at the Orcs. He needs to take a courage test because they are within three inches of a spirit hero, which gives them terror. Most of the rest of the Rohirrim have bodyguard, however, so they ignore it. All of the Royal Guard and Dea Wine have bodyguard. This rider managed to pass his courage test. He's in as well. And then this Royal Guard round the back. Probably a little bit of a suicidal move there, but he does stop the Warg Rider and the Spectre from being able to do any Angmar shenanigans. So we'll come back after the rest of the movement phase. Midpoint in Angmar's move and the Witch King is going to cast a Compel on Deowine. He's just going to use one dice. It goes off on a four plus. It goes off on the six there. So he has easily got that. So five inch move. We'll just take him to there. At which point the Witch King charges him. And he is then within three inches of the orcs, giving them terror. Still in Angmar's move, the Barrowite is going to cast Paralyze on Theoden. Goes off on a five, he's going to use two of his will. And there with double five, Paralyze has gone off. Theoden really does not want to be paralyzed because it will knock him off his horse and make him automatically lose fights. So he's going to use two of his will to resist. Oh, and there on a six and a five. So he's resisted it. And on a natural six, he gets the will point there that got the six back. So he's only spent one of his will to resist. Good effort there from the Barrow White, but also an incredible resist there from Theoden. End of the move phase and the lines have smashed together across the board. We've seen already the Witch King on the left, but then when Rohan counter moved, they charged in with their Royal Guard, one of them scoring a five to hit and a five to wound, T took out one of the Shield Orcs and has gone straight on in on that Spearman behind. Here, Theoden has already charged up, but this rider moved further up so that he can get a throwing spear onto the white. The orcs were forced to form a very long line with little terrain on this flank, which has left them open and vulnerable to Aemer's counter charge. Aemer and a royal guard are on a war rider. There's then a royal guard on the enemy captain and a rider on an orc. They've charged in there to neutralize the control zones primarily to allow the double up of Aemer and the Royal Guard on that rider, on that warg rider. The Royal Guard here 
moved back just far enough so that he would not be able to be charged, but he'll be able to get his throwing spear out. And Dernhelm, the Eowyn and Merry profile, over right on the flank, has done the same. She had been forced back by the Fell Light is in You special rule from the Shade in the previous turn. She's come back now, she's within throwing spear range, and she'll be able to get the charge off next turn. With that then, we'll go into the shooting phase, and we'll start with Dernhelm. She's just going to throw her spear, and it hits on a six. Then a five plus to wound. Ooh, not quite. And not worth a point of might. This rider here, this Royal Guard rather, uh, he has moved. So he does not get the hit there. It's fours normally, but fives if they've moved. Unless they're on the charge, in which case they get no negative one for moving. Finally, we have this... Rider here, throwing up onto the Spectre, but he misses on a one. Start of the combat phase, and the Shade is activating a chill aura. Theoden responds by screaming, DEATH! Activating his Legion special ability to allow himself and friendly heroes within 12 inches to get a free strike or combat. So Theoden will be calling a free combat. Aemer will also be calling a free combat. And then Dernhelm, who is fighting the Witch King, would love to be able to strike. But unfortunately, Compel is all the negative effects of Transfix and he's unable to. We'll start over here on the right hand side with Aemer's heroic move. Uh, heroic combat rather. The Warg Rider, setting the bar, just gets a three. Not good enough there, Warg Rider, unless some serious botch happens here. It does, with a lot of ones and twos, but that four there from Aemer does secure victory. He very nearly won that. So he is pushed back, and now the Royal Guard, who actually did roll one too many dice there, but it was Aemer that won it. Um, the strikes now from Aemer. He's going to do the one at a time to try and kill the Rider and then the Warg. So he needs fives. He kills him. And then on the Warg, he only needs fours. He's got two more. He doesn't do it. Does the Royal Guard? No. So the Warg there will be able to take a Courage Test to remain. If he does stay, if he passes that Courage Test on Courage 2... The combat won't go off. But Aema can spend a point of might to turn that three up to a four to kill the warg and not risk it. Is he going to do it? No, he's going to spend the point of might. He's going to not risk it. What would have happened? Oh, it would have failed anyway. What a waste of might. But there we go. So he has guaranteed that kill and then he gets to move on. And he knows exactly where he's going. He goes in on the captain with his royal guard there. The next heroic combat is Theoden against a spearman who has a spear support. So Theoden, three on the charge. Oh, and he wins it. The five dropping to a four, but he has the fight value there. So he has won the fight. These are double strikes. He strength five against five, so he only needs fours, and he gets him. That orc goes down. He then charges forward into those two spear supports. We'll stay with Theoden in the center, and we'll do the two on one up at the top. No charge bonus for the Roher in there because he charged a cavalry. Oh, and he definitely loses that one. Can't even be dropped by the shade any lower. The Walk Rider will need a five to kill him. No, just a one. And then it is Blades of the Dead for the Spectre there. So he will be wounding on fours. He is Courage three, Strength four, uh, Strength three rather. So it will be fours to wound. But a one again. 
he backs off. And with priority, he'll actually be able to get off the board next turn. So they've definitely bottled it on that. The next fight will be this one on one. The Orc is going to fight it. Even though he's against the charge, because if he gets that magic six, he's automatically won. Oh, 2-2. Two, two. I thought he might have done it there, but then the five. The Royal Guard has won. Smashed him to the ground and he's wounding on fives. Double six and a five. He is toast. The next fight across will be this one here. It's two on two. So that's four charging dice there. This is going to be nasty. Unless they get that big six. But they don't. Or at least not Angmar. Angmar there on a four high lose to five and uh, two. A four and two sixes. So these are double strikes, wounding on fives. Nothing on the first set. Can they do it this time? Yes, a six and a five. He is dead. And that spearman there decided not to give way. Again, just wanting to hold that line. The next fight then is Theoden. Theoden with three on the charge against the two spearmen. And they are looking to get a six to at least drain some might or potentially take out his horse. But not at all with a one and a two high. Angmar lose that. He is strength five on the charge, so he only needs fours to wound. So his first double strikes kills. And his second kills. Doesn't even need that third strike. And he obliterates those orcs. The shade unable to kill. Stem the wrath of Rohan in the centre. After massive success from Rohan in the centre. They're looking to repeat that performance on the right hand side. We'll do this fight first. It's just a one on one. The Orc is going to shield. They need numbers and luck now into next turn. And the Rohan in there does lose. He backs off. But then the Captain. Captain's got two attacks. He's going to set the bar. He needs a six here to stand any chance. A five. It's mightable. So he can give Aema a run for his money. There's two Raw Guard. Who, ooh, if that's cocked, we'll roll it again. But it's meant to be. It is the six there. So Aema doesn't even need to roll. They have beaten and trapped the captain. So with the captain trapped, it's double strikes. They're strength four on the charge, those. Oh, in fact, yep, yeah, double strikes on the two of them. Can't count. So four dice. They are looking just for fives to wound. Oh, and Aema doesn't even need to swing his sword to win the fight or get the kill. That is three wounds. And he has three wounds. Uh, two wounds and one fate, so he is dead. Aema will use... All his strikes on the warg just to make sure it's definitely dead. And he kills it as well. Doesn't even take the courage test. That is a dead captain with full might there. That was a bad play from Angmar. But they had little option if they were going to try and hold this wide front on the right hand side. Over on the left, things are a little bit better for Angmar though. As the Witch King is facing off against Daywine. He has three attacks. Daywine has two. The Witch King's elected not to waste might on a strike. And it pays off there. Although Daywine can still spend might as much as he's unable to strike. So he will spend two points of might to turn that into a victory. That'll see him out of might but in fact he's gonna just spend gonna spend one point of might the witch king unwilling to play daywine's games is going to keep that at a five five draw if he spends might to increase his roll to a six 
Day Wine can do the same and it'll still be a roll off and he'll have just sunk might into that fight that he could potentially lose. And he is safe from any strikes on a loss because of the compel that has afflicted Day Wine. So he's going to risk it on the 50-50, which he thought he'd do anyway if it was sixes a piece on even fight value. So, oh dear. So it's a five. Day Wine backs away. No longer be magically interfered with next turn but the witch king just can't afford to waste all those resources as he is the only might on the board for angmar we'll then do the rest of the fights after that disappointment for angmar we have a one on two this does go to angmar he will need fives on either so he goes for the royal guard and he kills him Sweet vengeance for Angmar as they get their first kill. The next fights are then this two on charging Royal Guard. And again it goes to Angmar. Angmar are going to need sixes. They're going to go for him. No, a one and a three. At least going for the horse still wouldn't have worked. Then we have charge on. He is going to shield. But on that draw, he loses and the shade is well out of range there. So these are going to be double strikes, needing fives. And he is dead. Angmar have had a bad turn there. Let's hope keeping the might is the right decision for the Witch King to start pulling this back. And butchering some horsemen. End of turn four. And that was another brutal turn. The centre Theoden thundering through the orcs and cutting them down. On the right, Diowine, even though he was afflicted by magic and unable to fight, managed to stave off the Witch King. And on the right hand side, Aema. And his band have punched through this line, taking out the heart of the orc force there with that captain on warg falling under the merciless blows of the riders of Rohan. Rohan then looking to continue their bloody work and Angmar hoping to put that behind them and to move on and get kills. We go into an important turn five priority. And it goes to Rohan. This could be very messy now for Angmar. Start of the movement phase. The Witch King is calling a heroic move. And Daywine is going to counter that with his last point of might. So it's a roll off. Who's going to go first? One, two or three. It's Angmar. Four plus Rohan. And it goes to Rohan. The Witch King regretting not. Forcing the issue and making Daywine burn his last might. End of turn five movement and the throwing spears have gone to work. On the left, Daywine managed to win the heroic move roll off and charge the Witch King. Although he has now been trapped, counter charged there. But importantly, this Royal Guard threw his spear, killing a, another orc. So he was able to charge that orc there. This rider did fail his courage test to charge the orc on the walk there. He's got terror because he's within three inches of the Witch King. So that meant that this Royal Guard had to charge the walk rider instead in case it tried to run off the board. Which did leave that opening there for the orc. In the centre, the two riders failed courage tests. But the bodyguard on the Royal Guard is incredible and they automatically pass their courage tests to being able to charge everything they need to charge. And Theoden passed his courage to charge the Shade. And then this Royal Guard has ridden off the board. Over on the right hand side, it's been an annihilating charge from Theoden. Uh, from Aema rather, and Dernhelm. 
Dernhelm has gone in along with a rider and a royal guard engaging everything. And here, this royal guard got a kill with his throwing spear and Aemer killed the spectre, allowing him to charge the Barrow White and an orc instead of the spectre and the Barrow White tagging everything and getting some serious weight of numbers in these fights. And then finally this little orc has just made a break for it, trying to either get off the board or to at least just distract the forces of Rohan. There's no shooting this turn, it's just straight into turn five combats. Start of the combat phase, the shade is activating its chill aura for a point of will. And the Witch King is going to strike. He wants Deowine dead. So he's going to strike up to guarantee the fight value in this fight. We'll start the fights on the left, uh, on the right hand side rather, with Dernhelm against two orcs. And they are just going to fight normally because they don't stand any chance there against those two sixes. That is brutal. Wounding on fives. First one dead, second one no, but then on the next attack, yes, she wipes out two orcs. We then have that royal guard against two, and again, they're going to fight normally. They need kills. They win it. Ooh, very convincing win there. Six, so they need sixes again to get him off that horse and kill him. No. And he just backs away. Then we have another two on two. Can I start getting some kills to draw? They're not. That rider is not within 12 of Thaden, so it is a roll off. On the four, it goes to the Rohirrim. So needing fives to wound. Ooh, that six is cocked. Three, no, so not on the first, but he does on the second. So he kills one orc and throws the other to the ground. We then have a two on one. Again, that orc is just going to fight. He does draw the fight, not within range of the shade. And on fight value, it goes to the royal guard. No. Oh, yes. The glare on it there. The five is a wound and he is dead. He's going badly for Angmar now. Here, a one on two. He's just going to fight it normally. And he wins. He does win that fight. Needing another six. A oh, one. Not good enough. It's a big inch. Then we have the Barrow White. And an Orc against Charging AMA. That's four attacks from AMA. And he easily wins that against double ones. No might at all in that fight. That is nasty. So he is going to... He's going to put every single dice. In fact, he's going to put the first six, because that's as many as we've got. Uh, he's going to put six into the white there. He deals just one wound. He does have another two. Cops. No, just one wound on the white. That is not nearly good enough. We'll come back and put pro markers on those in a moment. Next, we'll come across to the centre where we have Theoden and his band fighting. And we'll do the Royal Guard up at the top against two. He charged, so he's got plus one strength. But he charged into cavalry, so no bonus. So it's two on one, and the shades around. Oh dear, a two for the royal guard. Not cutting it there. We'll do the walk attack first. He only needs a five. Nope. Then it's the spectre. So with blades of the dead, he is wounding against courage. Strength three on courage three. He needs fours. And gets him another royal guard dead. 
Then we'll do Theoden against the Shade. The Shade just has one attack. Theoden has three on the charge. And it goes to Theoden there. Nice and easy with the six. Negative one, but still gets it there. He's then strength five on defense eight. So we need sixes. But he does have six dice because he's knocked the shade to the ground. Five, two, fours. He'll just... No, in fact, he definitely doesn't have enough might to do anything with that. So the shade backs away and is knocked prone. We'll just do this one on one here. So that's charging against fighting normally. Oh dear. He definitely doesn't win that. And the five gets the kill. Angmar hemorrhaging models. At this point, their best option is probably to die quickly and get to 25%. There's no option for Rohan to shield. So if Rohan killed too many, they could actually scupper themselves out of top VPs in this game. Absolutely brutal cavalry in this game. We've got two on one. He is going to stab. Oh, he loses, unfortunately. Uh, so does he stab himself? He does. He goes down to his own reckless behaviour. Oh, dear me. Uh, we then have a one on one. This is a fight and Mark can win. And they do. They do win. Needing a five to get a kill. No, he backs away. Then it's the Witch King. He strikes only to fight six, but it is high enough. He then has three attacks. He needs the six and he gets the six. There we go. So his orc friends on Deowine needing sixes. They don't get him. And then... The Witch King himself. He will need sixes as well. But he does have might. Oh, a five, six and a three. So he's done one wound. We'll remember that five. Because he can might that depending on... Oh, another six. Yes, he's going to spend the might. His last point of might. Just to guarantee that kill. For spite. Because at this point, Angmar are looking... Like they could have lost this. So at least he gets that nice spike kill. Wow. End of turn five. And already Angmar are very nearly quartered. They only need to lose a few models. And the game will end. So this could now be entering the very final stages of the game. This has been a very quick battle. Rohan tearing through their lines. So priority for turn six is going to be crucial just grab the dice oh and it goes to Rohan and with no might on the board Angmar are in trouble end of turn six movement everything has been engaged here this rider failed his courage test again but the royal guard was able to get in on the witch king and that royal guard was able to Hit the cavalry and the orc, and then that orc there passed his courage test and charged to get the trap. Another failed courage test, this rider failed to get in, but this rider passed and made it in through the gap that the royal guard made when he threw his throwing spear and impaled the dead marsh spectre. Theoden, passing his courage test, charged the prone spectre. Everything here has been charged. Aema, the Royal Guard and Dernhelm all getting in. Spearman here failed his courage test on double ones and ran. And then this orc here has been charged down by a rider. And then finally up at the top, this ride, this Royal Guard here has ridden off the board. Once again, there's no shooting. Everything is engaged. So we'll go straight into the combat phase. We'll start with this one on two. He's going to stab. He's not going to bother shielding. 
with a one. Even though that's cocked, that two is enough. Deary me, Angmar. These are doubled, which is good because that was nothing. Needing fives are, there we go, a six. And the orc goes down. Dernhelm, who was going to call a heroic move but then completely forgot, in her haste is against two. Four attacks. She wins it on the six. Does she kill the first one? Yes. Second one, not yet. She does have a lot more dice. Oh dear, a four high. Uh, she will spend Point of Mary's Might to pump that up and get the kill. And then coming across, we have Aema on the on the white, the Barrow White. Barrow White just has one attack against his four and has lost the fight. These are double strikes, needing just one six to put it down and that's the six. The white is dead. We then have a two on. He will shield as he's prone. Oh, no, that three does it and he has lost the fight. So these are double strikes. Six gets him on the first attempt. We then have another two on one. He's screaming out to shield, but he's going to stab. And it pays off on the six. There we go. Six is re-rolling ones to get some glory. A four. Slap bang in the middle. It does not do anything, but he doesn't die. And he was brave. Well done, Orc. We'll come across and we'll do the war rider against two. He is trapped and he wins. Oh, and of course, the Shade has used his Chill Aura, I forgot to mention. Chill Aura can be used when prone and when charged. And on the five roll in there, he has got the kill. Wow, what a rider. He smashes back with claw, tooth and blade. And he takes down a royal guard there and forces the rider back. What a legend. If only the rest of the force were as lethal as him. Then we have the shade on Thaden. Thaden with his three attacks on the charge against the one on the shade. Oh dear. A low roll from Thaden. But it's not good enough for the shade. With a, uh, a low roll himself. Meaning that Thaden now gets six dice. Looking for sixes. And nothing at all. Near me. The Shade just backs away again. Thaden winning the fight quite comfortably. But unable to wound past that defence eight on the Shade. Coming across then to the far left. We have this Royal Guard against three. And he wins it there on fight value, getting the six. Oh, wow. Rohan have been incredible in this game, pushing them back. And he is going to go for the rider, needing a five. Oh, not quite, but good work there. Can this other Royal Guard do the work again? No, not against the Witch King there with just a two. The Witch King, far more threatening and deadly than Orcs, needing fives to wound. Doesn't kill. That Royal Guard then backs away. And with that final fight, the fight phase and the game is over. That was a very nasty game for Orcs. Their time has definitely not come. Rohan were easily able to dominate this widespread board and have destroyed Angmar very, very convincingly. Counting up the victory points, Theoden has led his force to victory. With two of his riders getting off the board, that's double and at least two, the Angmar force who got none off the board, 
netting him five victory points. Both leaders very much alive and unharmed, so that's zero apiece. But then Theoden's riders are definitely not broken, but have themselves managed to break Angmar and net themselves another three victory points for an 8-0 decisive victory. MVPs has to be the champions. For the forces of good, Theoden annihilated. He charged up the centre right into the dragon's maw and cut out the teeth of the orcs and the shade. He's played quite a timid game this tournament, but today he has gone for it and victory has been taken. The Witch King for the forces of Angmar is MVP simply because nobody else did anything and at least he was able to slightly abuse Deowine with magic and got the kill, although it was at the expense of all of his resources. Crucially though, this is, as you know, game six of six in the tournament. Both of today's champions have given their absolute all to try and take first place. Today's victory has made a massive impact on the final table. So now we're going to take a look at that table. So this is your big spoiler alert. If you've not seen all of these tournament videos, do probably end it now and go and view those. Otherwise, you're going to get a spoiler. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button as while this tournament has ended there will be many many more videos and you'll get notified of all future releases for those of you though that are going to be sticking around let's talk about this tournament result end of the final game and it is tournament ranking time if you've watched all of the videos it's no surprise that sadly survivors of the lake town with two defeats and a draw are last. They come fourth. They did manage to get a total of nine VPs, but with a very low score, they are last. In third place, Angmar. They were battling it out to take second place. They couldn't beat Rohan on the table, but they could still come second. But unfortunately, with a very bad loss today, they have come third with two defeats and one victory and 11 VPs in total. That means Minis Tirith take home second with a tournament smashing 30 victory points. Two wins and a loss. Only defeated by Rohan, who are first place tournament winners with two wins and a draw. Absolutely incredible work from Theoden and his Riders of Theoden Legendary Legion with an incredible journey of cowardice and also bravery. Theoden has won. Taking home first place, Theoden has smashed the competition and won. Honourable mention, of course, to Boromir with Minas Tirith, who got their most VPs, whopping 30, but just not enough wins. If Theoden had lost that final game, it would have been very different. Minas Tirith would have won. And it would have been a different result completely. Theoden would have ended up third. But as it was, an incredible victory. Very, very well done to Theoden. And that is the end of the tournament. But it's definitely not the end of the fun. There are going to be many more videos, many different projects on the channel. So 
As with every video, I'll say please like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell button so that you're notified of all the future releases. Now that the tournament is finished, we're going to be delving into some more narrative stuff and there may well be some dabbling in battle companies. One thing is for certain though, there are going to be many more battle reports, many more close games and a lot more SBG. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.